fellow Singaporeans and residents. I'm speaking to you again to give you an update on the COVID-19 situation. We are now two weeks into the circuit breaker. On the whole, people have coped well. Most of us have played our part, staying at home, complying with the restrictions. We have adjusted to working from home and home-based learning. When outside, we wear masks and keep a safe distance from others. And we've kept to our immediate family units and avoided gatherings with extended family and friends. The number of new cases in the local community has levelled off to below 30 new cases daily. This is the result of the circuit breaker and all of us working together. But as you know, our total case numbers have risen sharply since the last time I spoke to you, just 10 days ago. Today alone, we have over 1,100 new cases. Almost all were detected in our migrant worker dormitories through aggressive testing. The large number of cases at the dorms is a serious problem. To assess the extent of the spread, we have tested aggressively, not only those who reported sick or showed fever or flu symptoms, but also those who were well and asymptomatic, not showing any symptoms at all. Almost all the migrant workers infected have, at most, only mild symptoms. This is not surprising, as they are generally young and thus much less likely to become seriously ill because of COVID-19. Our doctors, nurses and healthcare personnel are working hard, charging them early and taking good care of them. It is early days yet, but thankfully, so far, none of the new cases of migrant workers have needed supplemental oxygen or intensive care. We had one earlier case of a Bangladeshi worker who was in the ICU for two months. This was case number 42. We never gave up on him. Last week, his condition stabilised. He was transferred out of the ICU to a general ward. It will still take him some time to fully recover. With some luck, he should be able to see his newborn son soon. We hope that the situation in the dorms will remain this way, most of the cases being mild and very few needing oxygen or intensive care. All the major dorms are supported by dedicated teams of doctors and nurses. To protect the health of our migrant workers, we will step up the medical resources in the dorms. We will deploy more medical personnel to make sure that anyone with fever or flu symptoms receives appropriate and timely medical treatment. We will house the mild cases either on-site in a separate facility within the dorm or in community care facilities elsewhere. And we will make sure that those who need more active treatment receive immediate attention and can be sent promptly to the hospital to help them recover. We will also pay special attention to the older workers who are more vulnerable. We are preemptively moving them to a separate dorm where they can be monitored more closely. To our migrant workers, let me emphasize again. We will care for you just like we care for Singaporeans. We thank you for your cooperation during this difficult period. We will look after your health, your welfare and your livelihood. We will work with your employers to make sure that you get paid and that you can send money home. And we will help you stay in touch with friends and family. 
Ramadan begins in a few days' time. We will make sure that arrangements are made for our Muslim workers. When Idil Fitri comes next month, we will celebrate with our Muslim friends, just as we celebrated the Indian New Year with our Indian friends last week. This is our duty and responsibility to you and to your families. Apart from the workers living in dorms, we are monitoring two other groups of migrant workers closely. First, workers who live in shop houses, private housing or HDB flats. And second, workers in essential services. This group is still working during the circuit breaker, helping to keep Singapore going. Some are cleaning the HDB blocks or hawker centres. Others are maintaining key infrastructure, like our broadband networks. If these workers move in and out of dorms, they become potential channels for cross-inspection in both directions. Hence, we are housing these essential workers separately. We are also testing them to make sure that they are healthy and to pick up any infections early. So far, the clusters in the dorms have remained largely contained and have not spread to the wider community. We will do our utmost to keep it this way. In the wider community, the circuit breaker is starting to have an effect. The number of community cases has fallen in recent days. This is a result of all of us coming together, making sacrifices and adhering to the circuit breaker rules. But we cannot afford to be complacent. We must press on to bring down daily infections more sharply to a single digit or even zero, and to reduce the number of unlinked cases, those cases where we do not know how they got infected or from whom. Because, unfortunately, that number of unlinked cases has not come down. And this suggests that there is a larger hidden reservoir of COVID-19 cases in the community. And this reservoir is the source of these unlinked cases, which we have not detected. I discussed this with a multi-ministry task force on the next steps to take. We want to bring down the community numbers decisively. We also want to make sure that if any leakage occurs from the dorms to the wider community, we can detect it and contain it early and prevent new clusters from forming and bursting out of control. To achieve these two objectives, we must all hunker down and press on with our tight circuit breaker measures. We have called on all Singaporeans to stay home, go out only for essential needs, like buying food or groceries. Otherwise, please stay at home. If you do need to go out, then go by yourself, not as a group or as a family. Even when exercising outside, do so only by yourself and only in your own neighbourhood. Remember, it's not just about adhering to the letter of the law. The spirit of the guidelines is to reduce movement to a minimum, and to avoid being out and about in the community. This is the way to protect yourself, your family, and everyone else. So I hope everyone can cooperate and do your part. Some hotspots, like some popular wet markets, are still a problem. Large groups of people continue to gather at these places, making it hard to practice safe distancing. These places will impose entry restrictions to thin out the crowds even more. You can do your part too.
Do your marketing on weekdays rather than weekends. And don't bring your whole family with you for grocery shopping. When you run errands, go out alone, get what you need, and return home straight away. We will also close more workplaces so that only the most essential services will remain open. This will reduce further the number of workers keeping essential services going and minimize the risks of transmission among the workers. It will mean some degradation of services. For example, less frequent grass cutting in our HDB estates. But I hope we all understand why this has to be done. We will implement these tighter measures until the 4th of May. But we will not be able to completely lift the restrictions after that and go back to business as usual. We will therefore extend the circuit breaker for four more weeks beyond the 4th of May, in other words, until the 1st of June. Then, provided we have brought the community numbers down, we can make further adjustments and consider easing some measures. This way, we can be more assured that we've made definite progress and consolidated our position. Many will be disappointed by the extension of the circuit breaker, especially our businesses and workers who are hurting greatly. But I hope you understand that this short-term pain is to stamp out the virus, protect the health and safety of our loved ones, and allow us to revive our economy. The government will continue to help our businesses and workers cope during the extended circuit breaker period. We will provide the same level of support to workers and businesses as we are doing now. The ministers will hold a press conference immediately after this to explain the details. Saudara saudari sekalian, sudah masuk dua minggu kita menjalani langkah pemutus rantaian jangkitan. COVID-19. Secara amnya, warga Singapura telah berjaya menyesuaikan diri sejauh ini. Sebahagian besar duduk di rumah dan mematuhi peraturan dengan bekerja dan belajar dari rumah. Dan tidak lagi menyertai keramaian dengan sanak saudara dan teman-teman. Juga memakai pelitup apabila keluar rumah. Saya tahu ini semua sukar, tetapi terdapat tanda-tanda yang menunjukkan bahawa kita telah mencatat kemajuan. Di kalangan penduduk Singapura amnya, jumlah kes merosot ke paras kurang 30 kes sehari. Namun jumlah kes baru yang melibatkan pekerja asing di dormitori terus meningkat dengan tinggi. Ini adalah satu masalah yang serius. Kami telah melancarkan usaha besar-besarkan, besar-besaran untuk membendung situasi di sana. Mujur, hampir semua yang dijangkiti menunjukkan tanda-tanda jangkitan yang ringan. Kami akan melipat gandakan usaha untuk membantu pekerja asing. Ini termasuk menubuhkan lebih banyak pusat perubatan dan mengerahkan lebih ramai doktor dan pegawai kesihatan untuk menjaga mereka. Kami harus menjaga pekerja asing seperti mana kami menjaga warga Singapura. Kami akan menjaga kesihatan dan mata pencarian mereka. Ini adalah tanggungjawab dan kewajipan kami kepada pekerja asing dan keluarga mereka. Di kalangan penduduk yang lebih luas, yang membimbangkan ialah ada banyak kes-kes yang sumbernya tidak diketahui. Ini bermakna ada jumlah kes yang besar dalam kalangan penduduk yang belum dikesan dan merupakan sumber kes-kes 
yang tidak berkait. Saya telah berbincang dengan Menteri-Menteri tentang strategi selanjutnya. Kami sepakat untuk menurunkan jumlah kes dengan tegas supaya kami dapat melonggarkan langkah-langkah pemutus rantaian jangkitan dengan secepat mungkin. Kami juga mahu memastikan bahawa sebarang penularan jangkitan di luar kelompok pekerja asing boleh segera dikesan dan dikawal supaya tidak menular menjadi kelompok baru. Demi mencapai dua matlamat ini, kami perlu memperketatkan langkah-langkah pemutus rantaian jangkitan. Ini akan dilakukan sehingga empat hari bulan Mei. Ayo, kita kuatkan azam sepanjang dua minggu ini supaya memutuskan rantaian jangkitan COVID-19. Jika semua berjalan lancar, kami boleh melonggarkan langkah-langkah ini kemudian. Bagaimanapun, kami tidak boleh menamatkan sepenuhnya pada 4 Mei. Kami terpaksa melanjutkan pemutus rantaian jangkitan 4 minggu lagi sehingga 1 hari bulan Jun. Dengan ini, kita boleh jangkakan kemajuan yang lebih mantap dan baik. Pemerintah akan terus membantu golongan pekerja dan pemilik perniagaan dalam tempoh lanjutan ini. Saya harap anda semua dapat berikan kerjasama penuh anda. Bagi masyarakat Melayu Islam, anda akan menyambut bulan Ramadan minggu ini. Dengan masjid-masjid masih ditutup, Ramadan kali ini tentunya berbeza dari tahun-tahun sudah. Nampaknya, saya tak ada peluang untuk buka puasa bersama anda di masjid. Sayang sekali. Tetapi, saya difahamkan muis, para asatiza dan masyarakat Islam kita penuh semangat untuk pastikan Ramadan tahun ini tidak kurang hebat dan bermakna. Banyak wadah dan bahan-bahan online disediakan untuk membimbing masyarakat Islam menjalankan ibadah puasa, membayar zakat dan juga membuat amal jariah menolong mereka yang memerlukan. Banyak keluarga juga semakin mahir menggunakan teknologi untuk terus berhubungan dengan sanak saudara dan teman-teman. Syabas! Saya sangat menghargai pengorbanan dan daya tahan anda untuk mengharungi masa-masa sukar ini. Saya dan pasukan saya sedang berusaha memastikan setiap penduduk Singapura selamat. Inilah tugas paling penting kami. Kami tidak akan berhenti selagi maklamat ini tercapai. Bersama-sama, kita boleh mengatasi wabak ini. Terima kasih. Kwanjuangbingduji 这是不容易的政府非常关注客工宿舍的疫情
和物资给我们的客工朋友，帮助他们度过这个非常时期。另一个我们需要关注的情况是，社区感染病例中还有不少患者与其他病例没有关联，我们不知道他们如何受到感染，或是和谁接触了。也就是说，我们的社区里可能存在许多还没有被发现或检测出的病例，这令人担忧。因此，我和政府跨部门工作小组进行了讨论：我国接下来应该怎么做？我们只有两个目的：第一是让社区感染病例大幅度减少。第二是，确保客工宿舍疫情受到控制，以及没有扩散到社区。为了达到这些目的，我们做了两个重要的决定。第一，我们将进一步收紧现有的阻断措施，一直到五月四号。我们将继续要求国人留在家里，除非需要处理必要的事情，例如购买食物或必需品，否则。请不要出门。如果不得不出门，请戴口罩。同时，每个家庭在任何时候最多只能有一个人外出。我们也将加强人流管控措施，限制人潮较多的地方，如一些巴萨的人流量，让人们能够保持安全距离。同时，政府会暂时关闭更多工作场所，以减少员工之间的接触。只有提供最关键、必要服务的商店、超市和工厂等，能够继续营业。工作小组将在接下来的记者会上公布更多详情。我们希望这些新措施有助于大大减少社区内的传染。可是，从目前的疫情来看，我们应该无法在五月四号达成之前预定的目标，完全解除阻断措施。因此，我们做的第二个决定是将阻断措施实行期延长四个星期，直到六月一号，以保障国人的安全。当然，政府明白。这会对企业和员工带来一定的影响，所以之前所公布的援助措施也将延长。我们将竭尽全力与企业和员工一起度过这个难关。我要再次预请国人继续与政府合作，特别是年长人士，你们的抵抗力较弱，其实我们的抵抗力较弱，请别出门，也别到处乱跑。要留在家，才能避免受到感染。有人说自己生病是自己的事，可是如果你生病了，把病毒传染给别人，那就是大家的事了。所以，请大家不要轻视、轻视这个病毒，认真对待以及遵守所有防疫措施。让我们都负起社会责任，保护自己，也保护家人。Let me conclude in English. You will naturally ask, where does this lead us? How do we exit from the circuit breaker? Nobody knows how long the pandemic will last. Most likely, it will take more than a year before effective treatments and vaccines become available. So we have to take things one step at a time. To exit from the circuit breaker, we need to do three things. First, we must open up incrementally, in small steps, making sure that we are safe each step of the way. This is what New Zealand and Germany are beginning to do. Very cautiously, they believe that they have broken the chain of transmission, but they want to be extra careful. They don't want to open up prematurely after lockdowns, 
only to find COVID-19 coming back and then be forced to lock down a second time. This has happened in Hokkaido. We should try our best to avoid this. Second, we need to scale up testing for COVID-19 substantially so that we can quickly detect any new cases that pop up. This we are progressively doing, not only by procuring test kits and equipment from other countries, but also by developing and manufacturing our own test kits. Third, we will need to make full use of information technology, IT, so that when we discover COVID-19 cases, we can trace much more efficiently where they have been and whom they have been in contact with. We have the Trace Together app and we are currently developing other apps for this purpose. For these apps to work, we will need everyone's cooperation to install and use them, like what the South Koreans have done. There will be some privacy concerns, but we will have to weigh these against the benefits of being able to exit from the circuit breaker and stay open safely. I know this has not been an easy time for everyone. We are making progress, but we have not yet succeeded by a long way. The results do show that the circuit breaker is working. Now, we all need to do a little bit more make best use of the next two weeks of the Titan circuit breaker and the four weeks of the extension beyond that. I ask for your support and cooperation. I ask for your trust and confidence. Let us go all out to beat the virus and break the chain of transmission. We will overcome this together. Thank you. <laughs>